Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Last time, well, we were supposed to be going on a Minmus project, and indeed, I did send out a tiny probe to go find Min the go find Minmus. Yeah, to go go and find Minmus. It is the first time we went there. Indeed, we sent it off on an explore contract. Now, the problem with that is it was going to take seven days to take effect, or at least seven days to get out there, and. Seven days is a very long time for me to be sat around waiting for things to happen. So I decided to go off with Rich Malkerman and do all sorts of things on the moon, which was great fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and to wrap up, we did a little thing here with the uh, autumn leaf, trying to set up some sort of Eve encounter. All that taken care of, we got back and uh, saw that there was still, after all that, seven days to, to pass before the probe got anywhere near Minmus. Um, and that left me with a problem. And what problem might that very well be? Well, if we come into the Mission Control Center here and say hello, Gene, we've got this massive, great, big, long list of contracts here, and having a look through of them, like none of them are real major pro problems. But I did notice down at the bottom, well, not very bottom, but three from the bottom, we've got this perform visual surveys with Minmus. The reason I was looking through here is because look at the money we could make from this. Absolutely amazing. But my problem lies in the fact that this contract expires in five days, and I've only and my probe is going to take seven days to get out there. So I need to take this now, right now, before we even complete the Explore Minmus project. And we need to deal with this. So uh, let's get off to the VAB and build a, a ship that can deal with this particular contract. Oh, of course, before building, it's very nice to go to the R&D Center and grab ourselves some new parts to put into this new mission. Um, I'm going to go with the uh, specialized control section because it gives us nice new command pods and stuff like that. Now, I said we were going to the VAB, but I lied. We're going to the space plane hangar because I find it just a little bit easier to build these little roving around the, the, the planet mission type things that I wanted to do. And I'm taking inspiration quite heavily from the Alone Ranger for this one. Uh, I did start off like trying to think what I could do different with the Lander Can, but as it is a survey mission, and as we do need to go to quite a few number of um, locations to get all the visual data, uh, we really need to have full maneuverability on this vehicle. Making a, a lander that is almost entirely powered by rockets, it's not great. It, it's not great at all. In fact, it is the most fuel intensive way I could think of doing said mission. But if I throw some landing gear on it, I reckon we could do a hell of a lot better, like a hell of a lot better. So this is the basic frame of the design I've come up with. Uh, as you, as I did say, it is um, based quite heavily upon the, the Alone Ranger, which leads me to call this one Tonto. Of course. I mean, why, why would it not be Tonto? Um, so you can see here I was dealing with the, the issue that maybe the way that I've put these fuel tanks on here isn't quite in line with the center of uh, mass. And indeed, it turns out it wasn't. I had to go off and do a little bit of testing, find out where, where things were located and, and get everything sorted out nicely. But... I'm not really sure about that right now, so what I'm doing is putting on all the all the extra stuff that we need, all the, the batteries, the solar panels, the refuel port, just in case. I'm not expecting to, to, to refuel, but I wanted to know just in case. And I also put a winch on the bottom. Now, I never actually thought that I would use this, and it turns out I never actually did end up using it, but I thought I would quite happily like to have that there just in case. With the major form taken care of, it's time to go out and do some testing. Uh, one of the first things I notice is that my... Um, pointing marker i don't know what my my node on the the nav ball is pointed straight up and that is not convenient when you're trying to drive a rover uh, i have to try and turn with q and e and that 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 just doesn't work really i mean it for one it's inverted it's the wrong way around when i press e i turn left i mean that's that's just all sorts of wrong there so we take it back to the space plane hangar and it's time to do some weird stuff with the um the offset meter so the first thing i do is attach a probe core just one to the side port on the front there and then using the offset let's try and try and hide it somewhere nicely like that i think that's a rather rather beautiful addition and then it gives me a nice forward facing probe core to be able to control from so that i've got that uh those of you that have messed around with designs like this before will know this trick trying to use a, a, a probe core to point yourself in the right direction and here we go, and suddenly, control is much better. I have a bit of a steering issue, so we're gonna unlock our landing gear and see what we can do, and great, 
we're away. We're away. Now I decided that this is the perfect time to go and have a look at some of these new buildings because, like, I've never seen tier two buildings before. Uh, we're just going to have a bit of a fly around. I hope you guys enjoy this little little tour of my base here. I'm um, hopefully trying to find somewhere to get the kerbal out and have a have a walk around and do stuff. But these tier two buildings, they don't look particularly well set for um, exploration. Uh, there's no ladders going up. There's no there's no stairways. Uh, indeed, there are actually some stairways. I mean, if you have a look at the the top there, you can see there are stairways on top of the uh, scaffolding. But I couldn't see any way up um, from the floor, which means at some point we're going to have to bring a lander or something like that out and try and land on top of this. I would have performed said maneuver with this particular craft here, but this was built for Minmus, which means that these tiny engines on the side here are not powerful enough to lift us up which is, is a real shame now i had an idea that i could hang around for long enough and like run down the fuel level so that it's this ship isn't as heavy because as you can tell most of the weight actually comes from the fuel pods on the side here but you know that's no good it, it didn't really work uh and it's time to have just a little bit more of an explore around i, I just want to have a look around see see how this ship responds in in different circumstances see how well it, it flies from the inside um the annoying part here is that it doesn't really fly from the inside. If you come into IVA mode here, it switches the control from the Probodyne on, up on top to control from this uh, pod inside. Uh, and again, this now means that I'm using Q and E to steer around, not um, A and D as I'm used to. Uh, but this can fit in quite tight spaces. So th th this is a, a double thumbs up from me. I was really expecting to have to give myself lots of room around. Uh, and even off at full throttle, there's not really much that this this vessel can't handle. I was really expecting to kind of like flip it out and and break up and, and destroy everything around here, but no, no, it, it all went well. Um, so I'm just going to go and down and have a look at the launch pad because well, it's nice to be able to just have a look around and see what's going. And then I'm like, yeah, this looks like a jump here. I'm just going to like run over the side and everything will be oh oh dear, what have I done? What has happened here? Uh, well, thankfully, this was just a test, so we're, we're going to go put a launcher underneath this. So putting a lifter underneath was a, a relatively straightforward process. We just extended these two fuel tanks down to give it a proper engine, doubled that out a little bit more, and then stuck solid fuel boosters on the outside. And, and that's all I really have to say about it. So uh, let's go launch. So the launch was a relatively benign affair. Uh, Jebediah Kerman in control right here. The only real issues I have are trying to make sure that my solid fuel boosters burn out before these outside liquid fuel... I, I'm going to call them boosters. They're not they're like primary engines. I don't, I, I don't know what to call them. But this is an issue that I have all the time, so I'm not sure how to fix this, but I, I will keep on top of it. At the moment, it just ends up that I stage everything within a couple of seconds of each other and then use these final engines to push myself up to my apoapsis height. I like to keep it like just above 70 kilometers. Uh, I aim for 75 just to give myself some like slow down time, but that, I, I know this is always far too much. Uh, and then as always, I wait just a little bit too long before firing my engine, so we end up falling just a little bit past our peri periaps and make this beautiful circular burn. Um, what I do when, I do, when I've do when i um, gone past my periaps is just nose up a little bit and let the periaps catch up, not periaps, apple apps, catch up with me again. Uh, and now whilst we're in a circular burn, I'm, oh, circular orbit, I'm going to try and um, match my inclination to Minmus. Uh, well, I was, but unfortunately, well, or fortunately, whichever way you want to take a look at it, my transfer window, for want of a better term, um, arrived to me before the, the um, inclination node. So I'm going to have to perform my transfer burn here. That's all right. That's easy enough to do. I do have to swap my engines around a little bit, but that's also more than uh, dealable. Uh, and we're just now pushing our Apple apps up. Now, again, as with the Minmus Explorer, we're trying to push our Apple apps up to about 46 million meters. 46 million meters. Um, the reason I keep saying these numbers is because when you're looking at it from the uh, map view, it looks like you've passed way, way, way past it. And I'm, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to get it bang on. And now my inclination nodes come up and we're going to make a burn to try and ease those out. Because I've put such a small engine on there, I was expecting to be able to do my inclination burn on, like at an instant. Uh, it didn't happen like that, unfortunately. But, you know, there we go. And now we're just going to do a few trim maneuvers try and get our periaps a little bit closer without leaving the sphere of influence um and i decide that you know i'm just going to be mucking around with my fuel too much to to carry on 
um, trying to trim it any closer. So we've got an encounter. We're going to leave it there. Uh, and I think it's time to go see the uh, the probe. For reasons of brevity, convenience, and um, boredom, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here to when the probe joins the Minmus SOI. We are left with this trajectory right here. It's a little bit further away than I would have liked. Indeed, I would have liked my uh, periaps there to be down at ideally 250 kilometers. But that's all right. We're going to deal with that right now. Uh, first, I'm just going to muck around a little bit. And then I'm going to try and remember what my technical advisors had actually told me two episodes ago. And as it turns out, I'm not too great at doing that. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to start with a... Um, uh, 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 is it a normal burn? Is that what? Yeah, that's a normal burn. And then we're going to go, wait, this isn't what I was supposed to do. It was a radial burn. That's what I was supposed to do. I'm not changing my inclination. I am changing the distance away from the planet. Uh, so we do this burn here, which is kind of halfway between the two that I just described. Works fine for me. Bring this down to 250 kilometers. Uh, takes a little bit of time. And I'm, I'm looking at how much fuel I'm using here. And it's, it's not too terrible. With the periaps set exactly where we want it, um, you know, a factor of 10 less than where we are now, we're going to time warp our way down until we get this ideal scenario set up. Not before I reshuffle all the fuel. Now, the main reason that I was reshuffling all my fuel is because the satellite, once it's in place, doesn't need to be moved. I mean, once it's in a polar orbit, it's all done, right? And with this satellite being so small, it really doesn't need much fuel to push it into a perfectly circular orbit, especially when one of the, well, when the per periaps is already down as low as it needs to be. And here is a beautiful shot looking over at Kerbin, and you can just make out the mun in the distance there. I think that's amazing. Uh, I've set up my alarm clock so we can just do a little time warp like this, and boom! We shuffled on down towards our periaps. That's exactly what we want. Now, I could wait until we are bang on the periaps, or I could just do my normal board self and um, perform this burn right here. There we go. Perfect. That is exactly the distance we want. Uh, we've got, got ourselves into orbit around Minmus. That is the first bit of um, the Explore contract finished. And now I'm trying to do the second bit, which is to take scientific readings from the orbit, which um, turns out you can't do temperature scans in orbit. That's, that's really quite frustrating. Um, so, what we need to do now is start thinking about how we're going to land this lander. Yes, we land landers on the surface of Minmus. Uh, first thing, all the fuel needs, well, nearly all the fuel needs to go across. Um, what we're going to do is pump as much fuel as we can across and then give about the same sort of level of liquid fuel and oxidizer across. As I say, we've got a very, very small maneuver to do with this um, satellite here, so we need to put, take that into account. Uh, and next thing we need to do is separate these off. Brilliant. Awesome, that, that is exactly what we needed to do. And now we need to start thinking about where this guy's going to land. So we need to perform a, uh, a braking maneuver, get that periaps down to, I don't know, five kilometers or something. And then, oh, what was that? Did you notice how both my orbits snapped together? That's because I hit the satellite. Like, seriously, who does that? Who doesn't do a small lot of get out of my way type burn before making a braking maneuver? Now we've got to do all sorts of other things with the satellite, and I've not given it much fuel. Um,. Yeah, so I, I was panicking a little bit at this point, but, but we're going to stick with what we've got to do first. First thing we're going to do is put the satellite back up into the 250k orbit. Brilliant, that's exactly what we want. We're going to put put an alarm down at periaps so that when we are down there, I can then recircularize the apple apps up the top because obviously the opposite port side of the uh, orbit is the most efficient to do it. Uh, rename the probe because, hey, this is a lander. It's not, it's not the, the majestic eye, it is the majestic lander. And we're going to give it also a uh, an alarm clock down at periaps because I, I don't like forgetting to do these things. I, more than once, I have gone zooming past through time acceleration and just had all sorts of headaches and issues. So we're going to stop talking about orbits and start talking about landings. Here we are, my tiny manual probe coming down for a perfect landing. What I think we're going to do is go for a um, like a south, south pole landing. Uh, that, that would kind of make me happy. Uh, the, my main thought here is whenever I send a mission to Minmus, I, don't, I generally have a tendency to stick around the equatorial belt. So if I send this lander to the south pole, it can be my presence out there whilst I let people go around and do whatever they want to do. It, it's just to get myself some science in a place that I don't normally go to. Really. So the spinny camera tells me that we have reached the South Pole, so I just nullify all my speed, 
and wait until we start plummeting straight down. Uh, I'm a little bit worried that we appear to be falling into some sort of crater, divot or cavity because this means we're going to not have any solar power. Um, obviously this, this entire vessel is powered off these three solar panels around the outside and I am quite worried about you know running out of power before we can do anything. Thankfully engines do provide power themselves so if all else fails we could just fire up one of these engines at like the smallest of little putt putts and let that build up some electric charge in the in the bank and then one thing i do notice is i've actually gone and sent a wheel to minmus so we start rolling around having just a little bit of fun uh, you, you, every now and then i find myself in this scenario where my ship does something other than what it was originally intended to do and i spend a, a great deal of time just rolling around having having a lot of fun uh, one thing i do notice is if you go too fast things do have a tendency to explode it's all right this probe has served its purpose but this probe core here is actually quite useful um, all it needs is a fuel tank attached so somehow and I'm sure with the Kerbal attachment system we can make that happen. Uh, right, just a little final thing to finish off here. We will be circularizing this to another 250 kilometer orbit and starting up all the mapping software. There we go, the Explore program is done. Uh, you remember I told you about the Communicatron back in last episode? Well this is why I can't send any orbital science out. Which means that mission is going to have to wait for Jebediah Kerman to enter the sphere of influence of Minmus. And indeed, you are going to have to as well. I have run out of time, and I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. I will see you next time when we're going to talk about Jeb's missions on Minmus. Bye!